I like to race for money. Um, <laughs> I like to Rico Abreu, thanks for joining me on Sprinker Hub. Most drivers find some downtime uh, this time of the year, but looking at your social media, it seems you've been pretty busy with your merchandise side of things. Yeah, I uh, thanks for having me on. I uh, really try to ramp things up around the holiday season, um, just getting people, um, you know, stuff for Christmas, and I'm able to make big pushes. Um, it's just been really difficult for me to balance all that through the racing uh, season and, you know, have time to market the merchandise, uh, you know, sell at the races and race the race car and manage the race team. So um, this year we've made big gains on it. So I was able to just uh, stay positive during the down times. And, um, you know, this is a really time, fun time of the season for me to, really connect with the fans through social media. You interact with your fans more than I'd say any sprint car driver, and you have like a, a massive fan base as a result. I do wonder though, whether you ever feel distracted from racing because you take the merchandise side so seriously. Do you, do you ever feel distracted from racing? Um, I think at times I do. Um, and then at other times um, I feel like I can be, um, you know, turn all the the social media, the merchandising stuff off and, and really focus on my race team. Um, you know, I, I've really just put in a, a big effort in, in just getting people in place um, that can uh, organize and manage the team where I don't have to uh, oversee things so tightly. And, um, you know, we've, uh, I feel like I've made huge gains on things like that and um, allows me to be more open to connect with the fans uh, through social media and at the races, um, after the races, before the races. I try to, um, you know, distance myself a little bit during the, the race event, um, which mm -hmm. just really allows me to focus on driving my race car. You've had so much success in the past in both sprint cars and midgets, but I think you'd agree that 2021 wasn't the year that you had hoped for. Um, in the 93 races you did, most were top 10s. Um, so you had consistency there, but you only took um, a few wins. Where do you feel like you were lacking in, in 2021? Uh, I think just that critical decision race winning part on, um, you know, was the big difference for, for me. Uh, you know, I, I really focused on consistency and and just getting the same feel of the race car um every night and I I really struggled there um so it um you know that's where you didn't see the race wins from me this year um you know and and I had some personnel change throughout the season which made it a little more difficult at times um you know uh so it was just um you know where I had to really step in and, and and take over on, um, I, you know, I, I tend to catch myself really um, micromanaging the race team and it gets, um, you know, not me in trouble, but just uh, it becomes a distraction, um, yeah. you know, for my, for my actual physical driving part of the team um, where, you know, I am the driver. Um, so I, I have to rely on the people that are, that are working on the race car to do their jobs and where I can, um, focus on strictly just racing uh, and I just tend to not be able to balance that at times um, you know and, and you can see that in the results in 20 and more so the last few years um, yeah. where um, you know I, I really I'm really going to focus on giving that role up where I'm not um, worrying so much about um, you know direction with the race team and, and allow somebody else to do that. Can you describe how your race team works I mean, every team is somewhat similar, but I think you've got a few people work for you. You've got a uh, the merchandise side of things with your with your partner Megan. So how how does it operate? Do you only have those few people? And and yeah, so there's three three guys. There's three guys throughout the year that fully full time work on the sprint car. Um, you know, a majority of the season it was two people, and then we got three. Um, yep. You know. For, for certain parts of the season where we get really, really busy um, just to pick up on, on cleaning and, uh, you know, keeping the tires uh, uh, program uh, up, up to balance. And, um, you know, and then 
Um, just the, the logistics side of things is really where I enjoy taking care of things on the race team. Um, with the, you know, just managing parts purchasing and, and, uh, you know, on the financial side, I, I put a lot of, uh, you know, the, the merchandise funding back into my race team too. So, um, that takes a big balance out of, you know, my family investing in the team and then our great partners, Rowdy Energy, Curb Records, Lucas Oil, um, you know, the Saddlehopper Construction, uh, Chris Weiser, they all, they all are a big part of my race team to get the, get it up and down the road. Um, you know, and the expenses that come that, uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky enough to have a, somebody that helps us with truck fuel and a little bit on hotel rooms. We try to, uh, I base my team out of Brownsburg, Indiana. So it's, it's, we try to travel back and forth to the race shop where, um, you know, the crew members stay and, and one of them rents a, a room there from a friend. So, um, you know, so it all kind of works out where we don't have to uh, invest a lot of money into ho- staying at hotels besides when we're just out on the road for the race weekend. Um, so it's, it's just, uh, you know, managing that part is, is really fun for me. I, I really enjoy it. Um, okay. I know I need to, uh, to take a load off um, and, and allow someone else to do some of that stuff. Um, but it's, it's important that I'm still involved in seeing those things because essentially it's, it's my money that is, is being spent on that stuff. So, um, it's important for me to, to manage that still. You're one of a a few drivers who run their own operation. You know, for example, Brian Brown does a a similar thing. Um, and you did say it was a, a distraction, but Do you feel like if you were to drive for another team that that would be better or do you prefer this way? Um, I think there's pros and cons, right? There's, uh, you know, where, um, you know, a a lot of teams that, you know, high profile teams, um, you know, they take a lot of funding to run. um, And I I think there's, you know, there's an ability if, if I'm able to go race for somebody that, it would take a, a, a significant amount of funding. Um, and then there's, there's the side of it where I can, um, you know, be driver owner, uh, you know, and, and hire somebody to manage the, the race team um, and crew chief it for me. Um, and then, um, you know, have that satisfaction that you're, you know, you're a, a champion, you know, if it's not with the world of outlaws or, or any series, just more so a, a championship caliber race team um, mm-hmm. that's you own and you manage, you know, yourself and, and drive the car. Um, mm-hmm. You know, so it's, it's, it's more of a, a, a fundamental part on my end that I, I really enjoy um, doing. And then, you know, putting together race wins is, is definitely the icing on the cake. Yeah. I can imagine it's extremely rewarding when it all works out. I wanted to talk about uh, the start of 2021. You began the season in the the Works Limited 57 car before going back to your own Rowdy Energy 24 car. Why was that? Because at the time, I don't remember hearing any news as to why you went back. Yeah, so the um, the Works Limited 57 team was managed is managed by Paul Silva. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not Paul Silva's car. It's uh, a car owner is named Kevin Kozlowski, and um, he is a big supporter of Silva Motorsports and wanted to have um, the iconic 57 out racing in the West Coast. And they were in in need for a driver, which um, allowed the door open for me. Um, And so the first half of the season, I, it was, I think 10 races I ran in the works limited 57 car. And then um, the, the Midwestern swing, I um, got back in my 24 car with, um, Paul Silva working on it and it okay. uh, just kind of went a different direction um, a few races into it and I, uh, I started uh, just going back to doing it all out. You've had a few different crew chiefs over the years and um, including Paul Silva who you worked with for yeah. a number of years um, but you've really gone all in now with bringing Ricky Warner to your team ahead of the 2022 season. How hard was it to get Ricky to leave Tony Stewart Racing and why is it so important for you to have him in particular? Um, I think really that just the timing on all of that was um, just at the right place at the right time, um, you know, with the 14 car shutting down and everybody going a different 
direction. Um, and then um, my connection with Ricky and his family, uh, you know, and his son Drew being one of my best friends and his, his wife Danelle and his daughter Stevie are, I have a really close relationship with. And, um, you know, and there, there was an opportunity there for Ricky to uh, come to work uh, for me and, and I took advantage of it and I'm really excited. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to working with one of the best crew chiefs in the world. And, um, I, uh, I think he is, um, the number one guy. When you started talking to him about joining your team, was there some obvious changes that he was going to make that got you excited about what's to come? Um, I think just his experience in sprint car racing, um, you know, what he brings to the table, uh, his leadership skills, his skills in building confidence in me. I'm, um, you know, I, my personality is, is really, I really tend to seek um, off people who, who build that confidence up in me is where I excel as a person. Um, you know, I'm not good at being beat down. It doesn't, it doesn't make me, um, you know, succeed when I'm already, I'm already kind of hard on myself as the race car driver and my competitiveness. So, um, Mm -hmm. you know, Ricky is, has a personality that's really unique and, um, you know, his structure and, and building confidence in, in a race car driver is, uh, is really hard to find in this industry. And, and, uh, you know, someone that has that and the experience level he has for, being on, um, you know, the world of outlaw tour for so many years and, uh, you know, what he brings to, uh, my team is, uh, is, is hard to find Mm -hmm. nowadays, um, when you have just, uh, generations of crew chiefs and, um, you know, it's, it's the workload in this industry is so, um, tough and such a grueling schedule that it's, it makes it difficult for somebody to, to want to, keep being on the, the tour or racing just every weekend and, and being away from home. So it's important that, um, you know, those people with that experience are, are really taken care of. As a driver, it's so easy to start doubting yourself when the results aren't there. Did you feel like over the last year or a few, like you said before, uh, when the success wasn't coming, did you start to doubt yourself and, and, doubt your ability to deliver consistent wins i uh i went through you know the last few years i've been through a lot of um ups and downs and inconsistent results and it's uh you know and you have you know a couple bad nights and then you have a good one night and you think you got the reins on everything and you show up the next night and and uh you know it's like man where did that go you know and and it's right back in the trenches trying to dig out of them. Um, but that's what the unique thing about sprint car racing is, is, is there's always another race. You know, if you have a bad night, you move on to tomorrow and, and you try something different and you um, take a lot of data and, and you just focus on turning all that data into information and understanding, um, you know, what changes you make and why you're making them um, and, and what it's doing to um, be competitive or keep you competitive or keep you in the hunt um you know notes taking notes is everything and studying those notes i've listened to interviews uh with you before and you talk about how much you love racing and being at home in california is that holding you back from going full-time with a series like the outlaws or all stars and uh does it just make more sense for you to pick which shows you prefer to race at i like to race for money (laughs) Um, I like to, I like to, uh, you know, and and I think too, it's important when you are in a slump with your race team to, um, you know, the, the benefit of not committing to an out award of outlaw schedule, um, you miss out on the point fund, but you don't have to, um, you know, you can go a different direction if you're in a a slump, right. And go race with, um, you know, some, uh, not less competition, but just lower competition where it's, it's not, um, necessarily so grueling, you know, you're not racing against 12 guys that can win every night. You know what I'm saying? And, and you you get it, you know, maybe you race against four or five and, and get in a rhythm and then you go back racing with the outlaws. So, um, this year I'm going to try to run about 80% of the races. Um, well, I know I'm going to run about 80% of the world of outlaw races and, be able to, uh, you know, just focus on, on getting good, consistent results and, 
and going to uh, to my biggest focus is, is the Knoxville Nationals and the Kings Royal and and going and, and winning uh, those two events. You know, it's so difficult to um, identify where you're lacking. And I feel like you have done exactly that. And another thing that's difficult to do is to really actually make those changes. And it's obvious that you're doing that ahead of um, 2022. So I think I speak on behalf of um, all Sprint Car fans, not just your fans, that it's going to be pretty exciting uh, to see what you can do in 2022. Yeah, I'm excited. I'm, uh, I'm really humbled. I, I'm just going to make sure, um, you know, there a lot of focus and energy gets put into, you know, the communication side of the race team and being able to, uh, you know, just do everything right. Um, and if you don't do it right, figure out why you didn't and just move on to the next race. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing you can do in this sport is, uh, is once that night's over, you can't take it back You move on to the next one. Don't forget to subscribe to the Sprinker Hub YouTube channel. You can also find Sprinker Hub on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.